Understanding and Improving the Provision of Safe Drinking Water The United Nations General Assembly recognizes the human right to sufficient and safe water because it's essential to life. However, water is not naturally safe to drink, and over the past two centuries, the role of fully natural microbes in causing disease has been documented. Dr. Steve E. Fruity from the University of Alberta has critically examined the evidence surrounding drinking water disease outbreaks in affluent countries. In a report prepared for the Canadian Water Network, Dr. Rudy outlined the challenges that drinking water providers face. While the concepts of safety and risk can vary according to context and individual perception, Dr. Rudy adopts a pragmatic approach, defining safety as a level of risk that is so low that an accurately informed person need not worry about it. Conventionally, safe drinking water has been pursued by setting guidelines for individual parameters, such as maximum levels of specific contaminants, on a precautionary basis to seek negligible health risk over a lifetime of human consumption. While the simplification of the problem in this manner makes it seem more manageable, there are several challenges to this approach. A key challenge is a misunderstanding surrounding what threats are most important and in need of action. The greatest risks to human health from public drinking water supplies arise from microbial pathogens and fecal wastes, but there's often higher public concern regarding the detection of chemical contaminants in drinking water at negligible concentrations. In reality, recent fatal outbreaks with contaminated drinking water have been caused by microbial pathogens rather than chemicals. During and since his participation in the public Walkerton inquiry from 2000 to 2002, Dr. Fruity has focused on studying the causes of drinking water outbreaks in developed countries to understand the common failures leading to these. Dr. Rudy and his wife Elizabeth have published two international books documenting case studies of drinking water contamination failures. More than 30 major drinking water-borne disease outbreaks in affluent countries have been reported in the scientific literature since Walkerton. In 2019, the Rudys examined reports of these outbreaks and described the major recurring themes that caused such failures. Dr. Rudy concluded that such incidents were eminently preventable and suggests that rather than relying primarily on compliance monitoring of contaminants, maintaining effective operations and implementing effective drinking water safety plans will enhance the capability of operational personnel to achieve better prevention of waterborne disease outbreaks. The second, lesser priority risk category features reasonably certain but substantially less pervasive risks, such as lead and excess natural fluoride, which should be identified and addressed as necessary. Common but comparatively uncertain and otherwise lesser risks in the third risk category require a rational precautionary response. This third level includes disinfection byproducts. Finally, in the lowest risk category, site-specific contaminants with noteworthy toxic potential, such as pesticides, require localized plans appropriate to their risk. Such risk is typically low because drinking water exposure is extremely low. This category is also reserved for emerging contaminants that require research to characterize the nature of their risk. Dr. Rudy advocates that the task of providing safe drinking water to the public requires collaboration and communication among all who are involved, based on sound evidence regarding the most important risks and employing effective preventive strategies. In doing so, the provision of safe drinking water can be ensured and risk to public health will be reduced.